Hi, how are you? Uh, and uh, promised you earlier that we're going to be looking at paper two, and uh, uh, with me here is the poem "The Bright Lights of Sarajevo," and by Tony Harrison. Of course, the, nar the narration is done by uh, Tabiga Sherlock. So stay put. Let's see what are the exam style questions and uh, what exactly you are expected of these uh, poem and entirely the analysis of it. Anything and everything that we need to know as far to literature is concerned. Welcome. Let's dig into it straight. The poem analysis, lines 1 and 24. The speaker immediately takes the Mesa Selimovic uh, Boulevard, the main street in Sarajevo, was known as a sniper's alley. Many people lost their lives going about their businesses in this area of the city. Naturally, it is not possible to tell races apart in the dark or know who is speaking what language, specifically the word for bread, that most basic of food, what keeps us alive. Young people are out on the streets, boys and girls, and it is this fact that catches the eye of the speaker. The boys use lighters and matches to light cigarettes and also to check on the girls to see if they have found one another attractive. Between lines 25 and 46, for the first time in the poem, the first person speaker is revealed. This is good timing because a young couple have just hit it off and are hand in hand close to shell skulls on the pavement. There are bomb holes where Serbian bombs dropped in 1992. That is three years ago according to the date of the poem, 1995. On one particular bombing brought uh, de devastation and death to the people innocently queuing for bread. Now young lovers are meeting. The rain has stopped. The craters are fill filling with water and in one a reflection of the Pleiades can be seen. The starry sky caught momentarily in such an awful man-made creation poignant. The language is primitive towards the end and I quote dark boy shape, dark girl shape, which gives the impression of a shadow puppet drama. A slight and real feel. They are together avoided, afforded moments of intimacy by the darkness near the candlelit cave behind protective sandbags, one's flower sacks, sent in from the international aid. They will sit and enjoy each other's company until curfew time when everyone has uh, to be home and the city left to heal its wounds. Good student. Uh, there is this part here that they, together the boy, the, 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 the dark boy shape and the girl, uh, the dark girl shape, giving an impression of a shadow puppet drama. 
and uh, a kind of like a slight unreal feel. So they, of course, are together within this particular moments, afforded moments of intimacy by the darkness, are taking advantage of the darkness, of course, near the candle cave, behind the sandbags. But these sandbags were once flow, uh, flour sacks. They were sent in by the international aid, uh, given the fact that w this was a, a, a war torn uh, uh, place, and therefore they needed help. And they, the two, the boy and the girl, they will sit and enjoy each other's company until curfew time when everyone has to be home and the city left alone to heal its wounds. Good. So, therefore, what is the tone of the bright lights of Sarajevo? The overall tone of this poem is conversational and serious. It is a kind of reportage, observation from the front line of war as city dwellers and young lovers in particular try to rescue love from the ruins and carnage. Harrison wanted spontaneity and accuracy in his reporting and suddenly paints a true picture of life at night for young people. Life carries on, despite the blood and death, love is still in the air for all the desperation and grim mechanics of war and strife. Uh, literally and poetic devices in the poem. Uh, full rhyming couplets and iambic pentameter add the hallmarks of Horizons, the bright lights of Sarajevo. A single stanza of 46 lines, made up of 23 couplets. The reader is taken on to the streets of this war-torn city at night and given insights into the life of the young people having to, to cope with bullets and bombs, having to find love and romance. Alliteration. Alliteration is when two or more words close together in a line start with the same consonant, bringing various phonetics into play altering the texture of language as part of this case street sub shells clouds have cleared death deep death dark candlelit cave and he holds her hand good students now when two or more words close together in a line start with the same consonant start with the same consonant uh, bringing various phonetics into play and therefore they alter the texture of language for as part of this case the street uh, the street sub shells uh, you pay you, you you'll agree with me that street with s consonant s and that sub starts with consonant s then uh, uh, shells with s clouds have cleared we've got clouds see there cleared see there death deep d d right there and therefore alliteration and uh, do not forget of course the effect why would writers especially in this case uh, use alliteration to be precise alliteration is usually used to break the monotony and also to make the text more interesting so that the right the readers would be glued or they stay interested or they keep on reading as the lines um, interest them. Another use of language there is assonance. Assonance, this is when two words or more words close together in a line have similar sounding vowels. Again, I repeat, assonance, when two words or more words close together in a line have similar sounding vowels. Remember the words should be close together and in a sentence. And if they have similar vowel sounds, then they qualify to be assonance. The use of assonance rather. And in this case we have got, and I quote, and blood dunked crust of shredded bread. Now, look at that. Blood dunked crust. Blood, dung, cross. 
the same vowel sound of now shredded bread shredded bread now uh qualifies to be assonance in that particular case and of, of course the effects the next video uh all the effects of this use of language devices literally appreciations we're good to see them there so you have to hold on then there is also another aspect of uh, use of language there enjumpment enjumpment is when a line runs on into the next without punctuation i repeat when a line runs on into the next without punctuation this increasing momentum and maintaining sense and at, and i quote here and at their feet in holes caused by mortar that caused the massacre now full of water from the rain that has poured down half the day good students i need you to pay attention to this is like when two three four lines span over the other and they're communicating the same thing is like the writer has got a uh, limited or short time uh, and in which he, ha he or she has to uh, tell us a lot of things so you'll find that he or she would be spanning over sentences or running over as in this case and finally finally metaphor when one thing becomes another and comparison is possible or meaning enhanced when one thing becomes what becomes another okay literally it doesn't mean that one thing becomes another in other words when we, when one thing is substituted for another for comparison to be enhanced as part of this poem we have the tender rather of the tone of voice which shows uh shows by its signals that she approves this choice here the tone becomes the rudder the tone the tone of the voice becomes the rudder and good students stay put for an exam style question from the same from the same poem and uh as i'd always said last year i mean the the, the previous students who sat for the exams they sat for uh, not a poem but it was a fictional text the significant secret so for these candidate students currently uh, there is a possibility of uh a poem likely most likely a poem and that does not mean that you forgo the other fiction uh, text but you're supposed to go through them entirely and familiarize yourself with uh, poems and also those fiction texts and above all wish you the very very best adios for now